we will now take a look at the interior point method and the reason for that name will become clear and more generally this is a type of barrier method so the idea in barrier methods is that we solve constrained problems of this form so let's say that we have a constrained problem of this form with m constraints so instead so to solve this problem we actually formulate them as minimize f0 of x plus summation over i from 1 to m and it of fi of x right so it is some function so instead of solving it as a constraint the constraints are put into the objective function as some penalties for violating those constraints right so we are applying some penalty for violating these constraints and adding it to the objective function right and t is some tuning parameter we tune the parameter so that we are actually able to satisfy the constraints as well as minimize the objective function right so that is the idea behind all sorts of barrier methods and why do we want to do that why do we want to convert a constrained problem into an unconstrained one because we can solve it the idea is that we can solve it using a newton method Right, because Newton method is suited for unconstrained problems. You just have to find the Hessian inverse times uh, the gradient. And we have already seen several efficient ways of finding the Hessian. Now, this is not a one step process, which means that we don't just select T and solve it using Newton method. That's it. It's not a one step process. We actually do it for multiple values of T in succession. Right. So this is iteration over several values of T. So first of all, let me just introduce what kind of barrier or what kind of uh, penalty is used in the context of interior point method. A penalty is actually minus 1 over t log of minus u. So it of u is this. Uh, it is u has to be negative obviously because fi of x are supposed to be negative. So u has to be negative here. Uh, so this is the barrier uh, function. And uh, so the barrier function looks like this for different values of t and uh, you can see that as t increases this slope of this curve becomes sharper and sharper towards zero and in fact you can imagine that as t tends to infinity this becomes the indicator function for negative u because it is really going to infinity as soon as u touches zero. So this is the barrier function for various values of t. And the interior point method is that it requires us to repeat for t equal to, so for t increasing. So we take start from some small value of t and keep increasing it. And at each step, we solve this problem x star t equal to arg min over x t f naught of x minus summation of i equal to 1 to m log of minus fi of x. Note that I have just multiplied the whole thing by t. Instead of writing it minus 1 by t, I have just multiplied the whole thing by t. It is equivalent. right? And I have substituted this definition of barrier function here. And this, let us call this as phi of x. This is our penalty. right? And typically, we start with, so Typically, we start with t equal to 1, right? So, start with t equal to 1 and uh, at each step, we update t equal to mu times older t. So, whatever t was there, I multiply it by mu for mu, uh, let's say 10 or 20, right? So, these are, for example, the default settings in many of the uh, software that you have seen, Sedumi, uh, SDPT3 and so on, right? Uh, so t increases by a factor of 10 or 20 at each time. So, it, uh, so at first iteration it is 1, then it becomes 10, 100, 1000, 10,000 and so on. So it quickly becomes large and uh, that's how the iterations look like and what do they look like in uh, if we look at it in terms of contour plots. So let us say this uh, boundary 
denotes our constraint region so we are allowed to be inside this so let's say that this is the set of all x such that fi of x equal to less than equal to 0 and let's say that our objective is minimized here so this is x star so how would the iterations proceed what would happen is that initially t is very small so what is happening in the objective function is that objective function is not being given much weightage and all we want to do is be inside the constraint region now we start with a feasible x so you always start with a feasible x and in fact if we solve this if we minimize minus log minus fi of x we would end up at a point which is as far as possible from the constraint region boundary so we would actually end up here and the initial uh, objective would be or contours will be something like this they would be circular and we would end up at the at the center of that and what would happen is that they would keep expanding as i would increase t the weightage on the objective function keeps increasing and therefore the contours would look something like this So they would come closer and closer to the actual boundary as t increases and what would happen is that with each t i would go closer and closer to x star right so this is the reason why they are called integer point methods because the path from the initial to the final point is in the interior of the constraint region right so all at all iterations x star t remains inside inside the constraint region we start with a feasible point that is inside and then we remain inside throughout the point. so this is how the interior point method looks like and these are the iterations of the interior point method